everyone. It's so good to see y'all. I hope you're having a fantastic day and you're ready to continue on with our lessons in Unit 4 Reproduction and Heredity. So today we're going to focus on sexual and asexual reproduction. So while I switch over to the PowerPoint, I need you to get out your fill-in-the-blank notes so that you can follow along. So again, we're in Unit 4 Reproduction and Heredity. We last left off with Lesson 3, Sexual and Asexual Reproduction. Today's essential question that we're going to answer is how do organisms reproduce? And my goal for you is by the end of class today that you're able to describe asexual and sexual reproduction to me. So before we start, we're going to focus on just what reproduction is. So does anybody in here have any idea on what reproduction is? Anybody want to define it in their own words? Good. So reproduction is whenever there's one or more organisms that are able to take some or all of their traits and copy them to create a brand new organism. The original organism is called the parent. So your mom and your dad are your parents. They are the original organisms that created you. The copy or the created organism is called the offspring. So your mom and your dad are your parents, and they created you, their offspring. And this can happen in several different ways, but they're categorized as sexual and asexual reproduction. So before we move into asexual reproduction, if I tell you that if you put A in front of a word, it means not, what does asexual reproduction mean? Okay, so asexual reproduction means not sexual reproduction. And not sexual or asexual reproduction happens in most single-celled organisms and very few multicellular organisms. And that's because it's one parent that is involved that, that copies their DNA or their genetic material and is able to make an identical copy of itself. And because it's making an identical copy, these are going to be very small organisms, usually microscopic. So you don't get a whole lot of multicellular organisms because multicellular organisms have a lot of different cells and it becomes more complicated and more complex to duplicate. Um, you get a lot of mutations and a lot of issues uh, whenever you have so many cells playing together. So again, the asexual, it's not sexual. It's just one parent copying their DNA in a form and creating an identical offspring. We can see this in bacteria in our body. In fact, that's what this picture on this slide is showing us, is that here is a single bacteria that gets into the body and it creates brand new bacteria that are exactly like it. And they create brand new bacteria that are exactly like it. So they are able to reproduce very, very quickly. You know that when you get bacteria in your body, you can get sick very, very quickly. It takes time for your body to recognize the bacteria and to be able to fight it off. And, but a drawback of this, if there's any change, then that bacteria or that single cell organism or the asexually reproducing organism doesn't have traits and things to help it overcome changes. So that's why like your body, you get a fever. If you change the temperature, it prevents the bacteria from being able to replicate quickly and it slows them down, which gives your body more of a chance to fight it. So yes, asexually reproducing organisms can reproduce quickly, but if there's any type of change, it can wipe them all out just as quickly. The only times you're gonna see any kind of difference happen in asexual reproduction is if there is a mutation that occurs during cell division, and there's a mutation again in that offspring because it occurred during the division, or if there happens to be a mutation from the environment, maybe it doesn't kill the organism, but it changes how its traits or how its cell is functioning. It could damage it. A lot of different things could happen. So we talked about asexual reproduction. Give me examples of sexual reproduction. Good, so sexual reproduction happens when there are two parents that are gonna contribute information to create a whole new organism. So whereas asexual had one parent that created an identical copy, sexual reproduction, you get traits from both parents and create a whole new organism that is unique. And this organism can be very complex because you're donating, or not donating, but you're making copies of DNA and transferring that to create a whole new organism. So we usually see this happen in multicellular organisms, but it takes time for that to happen because they are so complex. 
And so the way that sexual reproduction happens is you, females generally have an egg and males generally have sperm. And remember when we talked about chromosomes in humans, a female's egg is going to have 23 chromosomes and a male's sperm is going to have 23 chromosomes. And the 23 in the female are, are from the mom, and the 23 in the male are from the dad. When those come together in fertilization, you get the first cell of a new organism called the zygote. And so the 23 plus 23, you get 46 chromosomes. Remember, we talked about how a human cell needs 46 chromosomes in order to function and to um, help that human be able to function properly. So once that zygote is formed, it's going to make copies of itself and it's going to divide and it creates a baby. Okay, so uh, when you talk about humans, they use sexual reproduction. Um, horses are sexual reproduction, elephants sexual reproduction. A lot of the examples y'all gave me earlier are great examples of sexual reproduction. So asexual is one parent making an identical copy. Sexual is two parents making an offspring that has traits from both parents. You may favor one parent more than the other, but you're never going to be exactly identical to one parent. So in order to show this to you, I've put together an Eminem reproduction demonstration, and I hope that you were able to get M&Ms because after the last lesson, I asked you all if you could talk to your parents to get you some M&Ms, and hopefully you were able to uh, keep from eating those so that we could use them in the demonstration. If you weren't able to get M&Ms or you couldn't wait to eat them, then you can use the template on my page, on my screen right now. Um, I've also got it in your notes section so that you can follow along with us and you can see and participate in what is happening. So I'm gonna switch my camera over to my m and so that you can see what is happening. All right, as you can see, I have my m and grouped up. I have a group of blue m and a group of yellow, a group of orange, red, green, brown, and then I have a couple of groups that have different colors in them. What do the groups with one color represent? What do the groups with multiple colors represent? Good. So what we're going to do is I'm going to read off a list of catastrophic events that are going to happen through a few years, and it's going to affect these M&Ms. So I want you to, before we start, going to your M&M worksheet and tell me which color you think is going to be the lone survivor. This is just going to be bonus points on your worksheet. I don't care if you're right or wrong. There's no way to know for sure. Uh, just guess what color you think is going to be the lone survivor because the events are going to slowly kill them off. So now that we have our guesses in, I'm going to read off the events and we're going to see what happens to these groups of M&Ms. In year one, an invasive species came into the ecosystem and took over the food source of organism orange. They all died of starvation. So get rid of your orange m and eat them, kill them off. They all died. So the asexually reproducing orange are all extinct. There are orange organisms that are sexually reproducing that go extinct, but there's still other organisms in our sexually reproducing that are surviving and helping those, those live. In year two, a tornado forced a migrating predator into the ecosystem. It used the blue organisms as a food source and eliminated all the blue organisms in the population. So our asexually reproducing blue organisms are gone. You can eat those. And then the blue sexually reproducing organisms are gone, but those communities are still living. Year three, a new pesticide was used in the ecosystem and destroyed all green vegetation. This caused the green organism to no longer be camouflaged. Due to being vulnerable to predators, the green organism was eliminated. So again, get rid of those green organisms. The asexual are completely extinct. The sexually reproducing are still hanging on by just a few organisms. Year four, a new bacteria strain evolved in the yellow organism, causing the individuals to be sick, and they all died due to lack of resistance to the new bacteria. So our asexually reproducing yellow are gone. Wipe them out. And then in our sexually reproducing, the yellow are gone, but we're still barely hanging on. We've got a brown one in this one, and we've got a red and brown in this group. 
we have red asexually reproducing and brown asexually reproducing left. In the final year of catastrophic events, the brown organism had a mutualistic relationship with the, red, uh, with the yellow organisms. And because the yellow organisms went extinct, the brown lost their food source and their protection from other predators. So our brown asexually reproducing organisms, they are gone. They are extinct. You can wipe them out. And then the brown sexually reproducing organisms are gone as well. So our red asexually reproducing were our lone survivors. And then we have this one sexually reproducing red who is going to survive and be able to pass on their information to the rest of their community. So you can see how the sexual and asexual worked. The asexual were immediately wiped out when something happened. The sexual still had a chance at surviving. These red ones, this asexual group, they were able to survive because they had a favorable trait that allowed them to survive, and they're going to thrive because they're going to make copies of themselves and pass it on to future generations. So I'm going to leave you to answer the other 10 questions on your worksheet over this demonstration. If you need some extra help, in answering this, then you can go back to my PowerPoint where I have a video attached of Amoeba Sisters and you can watch this video. It's a great video to tell you the differences between the asexual and sexual um, reproduction. They also animate everything really well. So continue working on your 10 questions. If you need any help, I'm here for you. All right, so that 10 minutes goes really quickly when you're talking about a lesson. Um, I hope I was able to communicate how I like to teach. I love to ask questions with the kids during the lecture. I love to provide the PowerPoint because it can um, work with all learning styles. If they are visual, they can see the images or watch the videos. If they learn by hearing, they hear me talking about it. Reading, they can read the PowerPoint. Um, tactile, we did a demonstration that I was also able to um, to create a template in that PowerPoint. So if the students didn't have the supplies or resources, they were still able to participate and to see what happened. Um, so again, those are a lot of different ways for the differentiation. Um, I also like to highlight the important terms so that they know which terms they need to focus on. The note taking that goes along with the PowerPoint, they can just fill in the blanks. It's a copy of what the PowerPoint says, but they fill in the blanks so it's easy for them to follow along. They know what they need to write down and it provides a resource or a reference material that they can go back to if they get stuck in later assignments or if they need help studying for their test. Um, success. I, get, I gauge success of my students by asking them the questions, seeing what they can understand, having them uh, inference what they think means things mean, like when we talked about asexual, a meaning not, not sexual, trying to get them to come up with that on their own and put that term together. Um, I like to uh, have the assignments that go with the lessons that we go through so that I can gauge how much the students were able to uh, understand throughout that lesson. And if I need to revisit certain things, I can do that or posting videos like the Amoeba Sisters video uh, from YouTube to help them if the way I taught it didn't make sense and they needed to see it elaborated in another way. Um, trying to make sure I cover all your questions. Wrote myself some notes. Uh, again, success in that assignment is going to be really gauged off of the questions that I asked during the assignment and the worksheet that they had as a follow-up uh, that went with the m, m demonstration. I talked about the differentiation. When we're talking about the IEPs of the students, uh, the IEPs in the class that you provided for me were reading comprehension and math calculations. Uh, there were no calculations in this lesson, but for reading comprehension, I was able to kind of read to the students, explain things. Uh, in that last demonstration, I read out the catastrophic events, and then I was able to show them what was happening on my side um, by taking away the M&Ms and showing them what the demonstration looked like so that they could understand a lot easier and follow along and be able to replicate it on their end. Um, 
So I hope that I was able to give you a good example of my teaching styles, and I hope that I was able to answer all of your questions. I'm looking forward to hearing from you all in the future, and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and to see a little glimpse of what I can do. Have a fantastic day. I can't wait to hear from you soon.